Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, August 20th from the San Antonio Express News. My name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect partly sunny skies and a high of 101 in San Antonio today. Four years before he was fired for using a knee restraint on a suspect, San Antonio police officer Michael Brewer was involved in the tasing death of a 41-year-old man police said was experiencing a mental health crisis. We'll have more on that story later today. For the first time since 1997, the San Antonio Spurs will be in the NBA's draft lottery, which is slated to happen tonight. You can find everything you need to know about the Spurs' chances of landing their next superstar in the draft this fall at the link in the episode's description. And now, let's move on to the top stories for the day. The Air Force said Wednesday a senior NCO on a list to be promoted to the service highest enlisted rank had been convicted of abusive sexual contact and dereliction of duty and will face a mandatory discharge proceeding but no jail time. Senior Master Sergeant Jeremy M. Zier was sentenced Friday by a military jury on Joint Base San Antonio Randolph that reduced him one grade in rank. An all-officer jury found Zier, 41, guilty of abusive sexual contact in an assault of a young female enlistee at a spa in Turkey in 2015, an encounter that began in a hot tub with other airmen. It isn't clear if Zier will receive an honorable discharge. He could be allowed to retire with full benefits. Read more about the trial and the ongoing problem of sexual assault in the military in the latest from Sig Christensen. Flecks of genetic material float inside the star-studded microcentrifuge tube. See that, says molecular technologist April Cornell as she holds up a sample during an afternoon shift. She'll test the tube's content using a process called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, for the presence of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that has infected 22 million people and killed more than 775,000 worldwide. Except for the low hum of machinery, it's quiet in the room. She works in the city's largest hospital lab, which takes the space of nearly three basketball courts inside Methodist Hospital at South Texas Medical Center. We went inside the lab to see what kind of work local technicians put in to report the results of more than 250,000 tests and counting. As the Democratic National Convention opened on Monday, former First Lady Michelle Obama condemned President Donald Trump for having downplayed the coronavirus pandemic and scenes flashed throughout the night from Houston, an epicenter of the crisis. In Texas, Democrats have seized on similar attacks, targeting Governor Greg Abbott and his ties to the Trump administration during the pandemic to undermine Republicans down ballot, especially in diverse suburban districts. While the governor is not on the ballot this year, Democrats have long believed that their best path to retaking the state house this cycle goes through Abbott, a close ally of the Trump administration and a fundraising juggernaut who has consistently wielded his name in campaign war chest to help struggling GOP candidates cross the finish line in crucial electoral contests. Jeremy Blackman explores if attacking Abbott's COVID response would lead to a Texas takeover by Democrats in his latest article. Columnist Elena Ayala writes, quote, Those who've read and studied Susan B. Anthony's place in history say she was not only intelligent, but tactical. She zeroed in on the suffrage cause and was willing to go to jail for it. This week, she made news again, 114 years after her death and 100 years after the 19th Amendment guaranteed the right of women to vote. The setting was a White House event in which President Trump announced he was pardoning her. Some of the feminists I called Tuesday were watching the second night of the Democratic National Convention and had the same initial reaction to the news of her posthumous reprieve. They laughed. You can read Elena Yala's latest column in the episode's description. To keep our readers up to date on the path of COVID-19, the Express News has built a dashboard of interactive graphics showing the spread of the virus in the San Antonio area, in Texas as a whole, and across the United States. We've also created an interactive map of San Antonio for COVID-19 testing sites that don't require a doctor's referral. You can find a link to the dashboard and the interactive map in this episode's description. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside your Express News subscription. (music) 
San Antonio officials reported Wednesday that 19 more residents died from the novel coronavirus, including one younger than 10 and one between 11 and 19, raising the verified countywide death count to 656. The Postmaster General ordered the removal of six mail sorting machines in San Antonio, two more than previously known by postal union leaders who say cuts to the U.S. Postal Service are causing long delays in mail delivery. San Antonio-based USAA is donating $30 million to assist military members, veterans, and their families grappling with the fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. The donation is the largest one-time philanthropic contribution in the company's 98-year history. A city panel gave the green light Wednesday to plans for a spa facility near the Hot Wells County Park, where the ruins of the former bathhouse at once drew the rich and famous to its sulfur-laden water sit. Officials on Wednesday announced that a Converse firefighter has died after battling COVID-19. Fire Captain Brian Anderson, a 16-year veteran of the Converse Fire Department, died on Tuesday. Students are not yet on campuses in the Northeast ISD, but teachers are working from their classroom. Cafeteria and maintenance workers, as well as custodians, are also present. The district has reported eight coronavirus cases in the past two weeks. As uncertainty surrounds the future of San Antonio's main emergency housing assistance program, one city council member has called for millions more in city dollars to be plugged into the fund that helps keep people in their homes. A group of conservative activists doesn't have grounds to sue San Antonio over the city council's refusal to allow a Chick-fil-A restaurant at San Antonio International Airport, according to a state appeals court ruling on Wednesday. A decision on whether to build a new passenger terminal at San Antonio International Airport is on hold until the spring of summer 2021, about a year later than planned because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Express News editorial board writes, quote, Now that Mayor Ron Nirenberg's workforce development plan is on the November ballot, the focus must turn to three important themes. You can find out what they are in the episode's description. Former Vice President Joe Biden has pledged to stop new drilling on federal lands and waters, a move that would have sweeping consequences for the nation's oil and gas industry largely concentrated in Texas. In campaign speeches, tweets, and a Sunday op-ed, President Donald Trump repeatedly warned of what a Joe Biden presidency would mean for the suburbs, which are the only battleground in Texas, as one Republican strategist put it. Bear County inched closer to making history Wednesday when court officials narrowed a list of 200 summons for a jury duty down to about 60 for the county's first virtual civil jury trial. Now they need to find attorneys willing to allow their case to be the first. You can read more about the process of seating jurors for a virtual civil jury trial scheduled for the next month in the link in the episode's description. And now let's move on to the fun stuff. In the right hands, eggplant can be transformed into lush, indulgent, and delicious dinners the whole family can enjoy. We're exploring some of the tips to keep in mind while working with eggplants and sharing four recipes that celebrate their qualities. With screeching noise and tons of poop, they lift to their devil bird label. Here are several reasons to give an expletive about great-tailed grackles in Rene Guzman's latest Essays Common Critters column. Movie theaters across the country are preparing to start reopening with new safety measures in place and new movies starting to premiere only on the big screen. SeaWorld San Antonio's popular annual Bier Fest is returning in September, but like many things in 2020, the pandemic has brought on changes for the event. The UTSA Roadrunners have four quarterbacks who have played at the FBS level, and Coach Jeff Trailer said he's close to settling on a starter. And that's all for today. 
This was your Express Briefing. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside of your Apple Podcasts app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.